Hey everybody, my name is Francisco. I'm a chef here in the Menominee Indian Reservation. I'm at the Menominee Food Distribution. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is a mini series of cooking videos. We're gonna be teaching recipes. Um, we're gonna be doing uh, cooking techniques that come, come along with those recipes. Each one of my recipes, we're gonna be pulling product from the uh, food distribution itself. Um, a lot of times you get a box and you get uh, some protein and some vegetables and some fruits in there. So I'm gonna be picking and pulling from that. Um, and we're gonna be doing a series of those. So today, what we're gonna be doing is a salmon and papillote. Uh, it's a French technique, but I'll be using indigenous ingredients. The salmon here is from the food distribution. Uh, some of the citrus I'm using is from the food distribution. The tomatoes are food distribution. Um, some of the indigenous ingredients. What people call local or organic, uh, we call indigenous. This here is sumac. This here is, uh, looks like a tropical plant. It's all over here in the reservation, I'm an Indian reservation and surrounding areas. Um, I have some dill that I picked here. We're gonna be using dill um, along with some citrus. So here we go. So in the kitchen, we all use um, cutting boards, um, which you should match your cutting board. You know, if you, if you have a poultry or, you know, if you're gonna use one for chicken, for vegetables and for fish, a lot of times it'll be color coordinated. Um, so what's important though is if you set your cutting board down on your countertop, it's likely to slide around like this. Um, if you're using a sharp knife, which you should use a sharp knife, uh, there's the potential danger there of cutting yourself. So in culinary school, what we learn is we have a rag, just like a kitchen rag, um, and we're gonna get this damp. If, if your rag is, uh, you can fold it if you'd like. So I lay my rag down like this, and then my cutting board goes on top here. Now when we're cutting with our knife, uh, we don't have to worry about the cutting board slipping out. So one of the first things that I'm gonna teach everybody is how to calibrate one of these. Uh, this is a meat thermometer. A lot of times in the restaurants, we came around in our, in our coats. Um, some of the thermometers that, you, that you're gonna find are no calibrate. I personally, I, I don't trust those because they're very delicate. The calibration can go off, which is super important, especially if you're doing like chicken. So what we're gonna do here is take it apart. So we're take it out, the, um, out of the case. The case here is gonna act as a, uh, like a wrench. So what I have here is a cup of ice water. So on your thermometer, there's a dimple and your dimple is gonna be where, you know, you're gonna get your calibration from in your product. Each one of these is very similar, if not exactly the same. So here we have it like this. Okay, we have our ice water. So we let our ice water sit just for a minute or so because we want it to get to a 32 degree temperature. Now what's other, what, what's important is this has to be into the ice water we don't wanna to touch the sides of the cup. If we touch the sides of the cup, the outsides may, they may change the, the temperature of the water, but we know the inside with the ice is 32. So now we're gonna look at, so now the needle is moving, it's moving. So we're gonna give it a minute to stop. It is not on 32. So a lot of times your, uh, your, your case on your thermometers has a wrench set up in there so you can move it like this and you can then move it to the 32 mark. So we're gonna move this to the 32 mark, right? And we're gonna let it set there. And it's pretty simple as that. So this should be done uh, pretty frequently. If you start, if you forget and you're dependent on that temperature, it may be off. So it's super important. All right, salmon and papillote. So in papillote, um, I don't speak French, <laughs> but I think it means uh, in the bag. Um, so what we have here is parchment paper. You wanna use parchment. So my salmon pieces today are gonna to be six, four ounces each. Um, and the recipe is gonna be per six ounces. So what we're gonna do is uh, my salmon is gonna go in the center of this, a little off center. So when I cut it, I wanna make sure, just like you're folding a Christmas present. So when I do cut it, I wanna make sure that the salmon is here and I'm able to fold over, over top of the salmon. So that's the main goal here. So before we put any kind of product on here though, we have to shape this thing. So I have a, a rectangle cut out. So I have it measured out. I know it's gonna fit my salmon. We're gonna fold it exactly in half here, crease it. So we have it folded in half. 
the lengthways and we creased it. Good, you want a good crease on there. Now we're gonna get a, our pair of scissors here, kitchen shears. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut a half of a heart shape in there. So I'll show you how to do that now. So we're gonna start from the bottom here and we're gonna start cutting. A big old half a heart. Let's pretend it's Valentine's Day. And then we're going to go in slightly right here. So we have our half a heart cut. And should be heart. That's pretty good. Um, these are some of the ingredients that we're going to be using today. So we have some citrus. I have two different types from the food distribution here. We have lemons. We have oranges, um, we have some dill, which is in everybody's garden right now. We have uh, grape tomatoes, you can use cherry tomatoes, that works just fine. Um, and this one here is indigenous here. This is sumac from the reservation. In surrounding areas, it's indigenous. Um, it's that red berry that you see everywhere. It looks kind of tropical, has a very tart flavor to it. Um, so there's gonna be a lot of tartness there's you know from the from the lemon from the dill from the sumac so we're going to offset that with a little bit of orange juice itself um, so it'll work out first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our lemon and our cutting board now it's secure and we're going to be cutting a slice off so we're going to cut the end off here right so we're not going to need that we're going to do a slice of lemon and the next thing we're going to do the same exact thing to our orange off. So we got them roughly about the same size here. And then we're going to start mixing some of our, our other ingredients. This is going to go underneath the salmon. Um, so the sumac, you can't really go out into the store and purchase that. So what I did was I went and harvested it. I, um, those little red berries, it, it they're about this long, the whole little little plant. Um, so I pulled those off. I put them in a dehydrator. And I dehydrate them for five or six hours. Once they're dehydrated, and then you can either put them in a coffee grinder. I use a mocajete because there's little seeds inside of there. And the seeds are a little, uh, they're hard, they're crunchy, hard. So you got to separate those, and then I sifted it. And then you come out with the, uh, the powder like this. So that's how you would harvest those. Don't forget also to wash them when you get them because they're out in the woods. So the dill here, our dill, we're just gonna real rough chop this. We're gonna rough chop this, just pull it apart like this. Nothing, nothing special. So this is roughly two tablespoons of sumac to one tablespoon of dill. And we have these little dill florets here we're gonna use after. Um, and then along with this, we're going to be getting some, some lemon zest here from the, from the outside of our lemon. We're going to be using roughly about a teaspoon of lemon zest. If you don't have a microplane or a, you know, something to zest with, you can use a, um, a vegetable peeler. That works as well. And then on top of that, we're gonna be zesting the orange. So the same portion sizes, lemon zest, orange zest, about a teaspoon each. All right, some good colors going on there. So we got our dill, our sumac, lemon zest, orange zest. There you go. All right, so we have our heart shape here. So we're gonna take our slices, our fruit slices that we made, our salmon, our orange. We're gonna lay down, them down first. There's a crease from our heart being folded in half. On that crease, we're going to work into one side of it. If you're left-handed, you can work on the other side. Uh, so we're going to set these down right on the side of that crease on the right side. We're going to place the salmon fillets. I kept the skin on. That's really up to you. Later on in our video series, um, I can show you how to take the skin off. But for right now, I want to keep things simple, as simple as can be. Um, so here we go. So we got our salmon from the food distribution here. Skin, we're gonna place the skin down. 
You can use one piece of salmon. I'm using two because they're smaller. So I use two pieces, get on, and each, I'm gonna put them on top of the fruit slices. What, what's gonna happen here is then when we put this thing together, it's gonna look like an empanada, is we're gonna get some airflow underneath there and it's, it's gonna pick up the aromas of those fruit slices. So we got our, our mixture here of our ingredients, our seasons. We got our salmon all ready with the fruit underneath. Next, we're gonna cut our tomatoes in half. Um, so my fingers here are tucked. My fingers are tucked in. My thumb is behind my fingers and my knife is following right here. My knife follows the, the knuckle here and I'm using the whole knife as I go down. So we're gonna cut these in half. Again, you can use cherry tomatoes. You can use a whole tomato and just cut them in smaller little slices. On our, our heart shape parchment paper, we're just gonna put these in here. Now when you do this at home, once you um, learn how, how to papillote itself, you can do this with any kind of fish. You can do your own fillings. You can go in your garden, you know, you find oregano or mint, um, parsley, whatever you have out there for herbs, you can add that to your dish. We're just gonna place those in. Again, we're staying on the side of that crease. So we're, we have a lot of tart ingredients with the lemon zest, orange zest, and the sumac is tart. Um, so we're gonna offset that a little bit. So we're, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna uh, make like a very simple vinaigrette, which is a three to one ratio oil to vinegar normally. We're gonna use orange in this case for some of the sweetness here. So we're gonna put our oil so three to one ratio, and we're gonna put our orange juice in here. So it's gonna add the sweetness, so it's, everything will come together. So our orange juice here, and then we have our, our brush. You can use your fingers if you want. This is, uh, I use a canola oil. If you have some oils at home you wanted to use, canola oil doesn't have a real flavor to it, but it has a nice smoke point. So we're gonna take our brush, we're gonna brush our our salmon here, nice bright colors and bright flavors to match it. And summertime, it works real well. We're gonna get some of that vinaigrette on the tomatoes. Then from there, inside, our sumac, lemon zest, orange zest, and dill. We put this on our fish. Make sure it's spread out pretty good. All right, and I'm just gonna, to pull this all together, I'm just gonna do uh, like a half a teaspoon of salt. I always use a kosher or, or a sea salt. All right, we're gonna start uh, putting our poppy out together. So a little trick that I do is our brush from earlier has a little bit of uh, the oil on there yet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run this alongside, act as a glue. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to fold it together now. Right, so it's folded together, so make sure it's even. And then this is super important. So we're gonna start from the top of our heart and we're gonna crimp it, we're gonna fold it like this. And we're gonna make sure that's sealed right there. We're gonna make sure that's that crease there. And then we're just gonna keep following that. Now we're gonna crease it again. And we're gonna make sure that crease is solid because we want to trap in all the steam that's in here. And we're just going to keep following, we're going to follow the shape around, very simple. So I'm just following this around. Each time I'm making sure that it's down there pretty good, because we don't want no air coming in here. When we get to the bottom here, the bottom we're going to do a little different. So now I got it all creased down the sides here. So the bottom, there's this little uh, tail and it has an opening here. So there, there's a few ways you can do this. You can keep crimping it and then we're gonna tuck it underneath or what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna take it, we're gonna twist it a couple of times. That really seals the air in. So I'm doing a couple of twists on there and then we're gonna tuck it underneath here. We're gonna tuck it underneath, and there we go.
All right, so we got our oven. We got it preheated to 400 degrees. We have our papillote all put together and ready to go. I have a sheet pan here, a little half pan. Um, so you can use uh, whatever you want here. You can even use just aluminum foil. So we got our papillote ready. Oven preheated. We're going to go center shelf here. Let's place it in there like that. And then we're going to let this go depending on the size of your fish. The recipe is going to be for a fish that's about six ounces or so, uh, about 15 to 20 minutes. All right, so it's been 20 minutes. We're going to check our fish here. Put it on our serving platter. All right, so in the restaurants, they bring it out to your table like this, and they serve it just like this. And we'll just kind of snip it open here. I'll let the steam extract there. All right, so that's our salmon and papillote. The beautiful thing about this technique, um, like I said, you can papillote vegetables, other types of fish, other types of protein. Um, it's very hard to overcook it and dry it out because what we're doing is trapping the steam in there. Um, so this is just our first video of our little mini cooking series. Again, stay tuned. We're gonna have um, recipes, techniques, procedures. There we are.